Good morning, uh, this is Mr. Beckstrom, and today I wanted to work a problem out of section 1.3. Uh, this is going to be a finding solutions using our calculator uh, for equations. And in this example, we're going to be doing a third degree polynomial. And uh, I just want to show you how to do this in the calculator and, uh, and how to get those solutions. So uh, looking at the problem here, it says use a graphing utility to approximate the real solutions, if any, of the equation. All solutions lie between negative 10 and positive 10. And uh, they tell us this here, that uh, it's between negative 10 and positive 10. So that way we can set the window of our calculator to just go from negative 10 to positive 10. And that will make sure that we're not missing any of these solutions. And it also makes sure that uh, we're not, we don't have a lot of extra space uh, as well. Uh, but we'll, we'll do that in the problem here. So the first thing I want to do is... is uh, Remember, we need a, either a TI-83 or TI-84 calculator for the class. So I'm going to pull out my calculator, and uh, I want to put this equation um, in the y equals here. So I, I hit y equals, and then I'm going to do uh, this button here is for all the variables. So for if we're doing normal functions, it's x. If we're in parametric of functions, we get t's. If we're in polar functions, we get theta, so it's just going to give us the vari the appropriate variable. So in this case, it's x. So I'm going to hit x, and to raise something other than a square, I can uh, I have to use this little uh, caret here. So uh, raise to the third power, and then I move over. I'm going to say minus 4x, and the squares, I can just hit this little squared button right here, and then minus 3x plus 3. So this is what uh, this is what I should look like here. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to uh, fix my window, uh, so that way um, I make sure I get all the answers. So I'm going to go ahead and hit window, and you see it already defaults to negative ten to positive ten. So that's great. That's exactly where I want those solutions to be. Uh, from the problem there. If it was something else, I would uh, make the minimum x value negative 10 and the uh, maximum x value negative 10. The y's aren't as important. Uh, negative 10 to positive 10 is fine. Remember, we're looking for where this curve crosses the x-axis, so uh, the y-axis is going to be less important there. Uh, so once you have it like you want it, uh, then I'm just going to go to graph. I'm going to get something that looks like this. Now, since this is a third degree polynomial, uh, we're going to have at most three real solutions. Uh, and the solutions are going to be the x values wherever it crosses the x axis. So we can see that it looks like we're going to have three real solutions. One right here, which looks somewhere around negative one. One right here, which looks somewhere around positive two thirds. And one right here looks somewhere around 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, about 5.5. Now remember, we need to give uh, accurate answers up to two decimal places. So, uh, well, I didn't say that at the beginning, but we want to give answers up to two decimal places, and we want to use our calculator to solve this. So in order to solve this, once I have it up like this, I can hit the calculate function up here. Notice it's in blue, so I have to hit the second key first. So I hit second calculate. And the solutions of, of any curve is the same as the zeros. The zeros and are the solutions. So I'm going to go down to zero and hit enter. And then it's going to ask me to uh, where is a left bound? And a left bound means I want my my blinking dot there to be on the left side of the zero that I'm trying to find or the solution that I'm trying to find. So if I want to find this solution right here, the one that's farthest to the left, I need to make sure that this icon or this blinking cursor is to the left of this. Right now it's to the right of it. So I'm going to just keep going until I get, it's going to have to pass over it before I can get to the left hand side and I'm going to say enter. And as you can see, now this vertical line does lie to the left of the solution that we're looking for. And this process is, is because we have three solutions, and we want to make sure that we're finding each solution individually. So if I hit Enter, oh, 
I'm sorry, now it's asking for my right bound. So I'm just going to push over to the right until I cross over it again. Hit enter. Now you can see that this solution is the only solution that's between these two vertical lines. I don't need to guess. I can just hit enter again. And my first zero is negative 1.11. So that would be uh, rounded to two, to two decimal places. So negative 1.11. So let's go over here and solutions negative 1.11 all right we'll go back to the calculator and we're going to do the same thing for these other two solutions so i'm going to go ahead and hit a uh, second calculate go to zero and it's asking me for the left bound again so now i'm just going to make sure that i'm on the left side of this zero this solution so i can that's fine and then i go over to the right make sure i cross over it hit enter again now you can see that this is the only solution between these two vertical lines and i hit enter and i get 0 0.59 which is going to actually go up to 0 0.60 so let's go back to here and 0 0.60 would be a second solution and then for the final solution, let's do it again. So second, calculate uh, my zero. And I can be anywhere as long as there's no other solutions between it. So I could do it here, that's fine. That's my first line. And then my second line needs to cross over this solution here and hit enter again. And now you can see that this zero this x intercept which is the solutions is the only x intercept value between these two lines so i hit enter again and i get 4.52 4.52 so going back to here and those are my three real solutions rounded to two decimal places which means that if i were to go back up to the function and let's do that before we end just uh give you a little more uh calculator uh information but if i were to then go back here and i do second quit and remember i have uh this equation stored as my as my uh y1 uh, what I can do is I can evaluate these three um, solutions and because they're only approximations because we had to reduce them it's not going to quite give me a zero when I put them in the function but it'll be pretty close and to do that I'm just going to do one of them I'll do the negative 1.11 what we can do is hit vars go over to y variables hit enter uh, we're going to pull up, this means that we're pulling up the this function here, because that's the one that we put in y1. And then I'm going to open parentheses and ask it to evaluate that at negative 1.11. And we should get a y value that's pretty close to zero. And you can see we do. That is pretty close to zero. And if we did the other two, we'd get similar uh, values that are pretty close to zero. And that's, that's the, uh, the point of this exercise. All right. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure you uh, shoot me an email and uh, hope you all have a great week and a weekend. Thank you.